Hello, my name is Stokes Baker. In this video, I will be talking about how you create graphs that contain confidence intervals using Microsoft Excel. I am making the following assumptions that you are using Excel 2013 or the equivalent Excel 365. That you know how to write formulas in Excel and you know how to create graphs. And finally, that you have a basic understanding of descriptive statistics. Before I talk about how to create our graphs, I would like to review the concept behind a confidence interval. A confidence interval is a range of values around a sample mean where a population mean is likely to be found. What I'm showing right here is the equation describing a confidence interval. Mu is our population mean, x bar is our sample mean, plus or minus the range of values. Collectively this term is known as the margin of error. To describe the margin of error, you describe s, which is our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n, which is the sample size and you multiply that by t, which is the critical value of the student t distribution. That value is a function of the sample size and alpha. Alpha is the amount of type 1 error. Type 1 error is the proportion of the time that the confidence interval does not overlap the population mean. The goal is to create a graph like this. On our y-axis is some sort of average or mean, and our x-axis is our independent variable. The bars represents the values of the means, and the range bars around the means are our confidence intervals. What I would like to describe are the basic steps involved to trick Excel into making our desired graph. So the first thing we need to do is to calculate the sample means and the confidence interval values. Then we're going to create a line graph that shows the upper bound and lower bound of the confidence intervals and the sample means. So here we're showing our intermediate graph showing the upper values of the confidence interval, the lower values, and the gray is our sample means. We're then going to use graph layout 10 to add high low bars those are these black bars shown here we are then going to remove the line containing the confidence interval data points so we're going to remove this orange line and the blue line if we desire a bar graph we're going to then convert this gray line graph into bars and finally we're going to do the labeling of the axes and the cleaning up of the font and things like that. What we are showing here is an Excel spreadsheet that we're going to use to demonstrate how we make graphs for confidence intervals. Right here I have simulated data. Uh, in this case we're looking at clutch size which is the number of eggs per nest from three different populations of Canadian geese. Here's our equation describing the confidence interval where we need to calculate our population mean, our sample standard deviation, our sample size, and we'll need to define alpha. The equation for sample mean, x bar, is shown right here, which is average, and then you define an array of cells. In this case, we're going to do cells A3 through A18. Notice some of these are empty, but you'll see why I did that in a moment. For a standard deviation, S, we're going to use the command stdev.s for sample. If it was stop P, that would stand for population, but we're using dot S for sample. And then our array of cells, and again we're going to doing A3 through A18. We need to determine the number of observations in our array. N, that's your number of, that's your sample size. 
The command for that is count, and then you define the array. You then type in the value you want for alpha. Typically, alpha is 5%. We're then going to calculate the margin of error, which is this term, plus or minus t s divided by square root of n. The command for the margin of error is called confidence dot t. And then the argument is the cell defining alpha, the cell defining your sample standard deviation s, and your cell telling you what your sample size is. Once we calculate the confidence interval, we're going to do the margin of error. We're going to calculate the upper value of the confidence interval. That's your mean plus your margin of error and your mean minus your margin of error. So to demonstrate those calculations, I'm just going to fill in the values. So notice we calculated the average right there. These cells are highlighted. And to determine the upper value of the margin of error, go equals the sample mean plus the margin of error, the sample mean minus the margin of error. Now notice I included these empty cells and the reason for that is I'm going to use the click and drag function of Excel to do the calculations for other data sets. And notice we're highlighting enough cells that we include the largest uh, data array which case is in column B. I highlight the cells that contain our calculations. See this little green box in the lower right hand corner? I click, hold, and then drag, and then release, and it fills in our calculations. Now notice these values say number, and the reason for that is Excel assuming you want to add one to each value for our alpha. We don't. So we're going to change that back to 0.05 or 5 percent. And the same with this cell. Notice that we included the entire data array with our calculations. So we, the values highlighted are what we need to graph our confidence interval. That's our sample means and the range of our confidence interval. Now it's time to make our graph. Okay, I like to highlight the confidence interval first and then we're going to use the line graph function. Even though we want a bar graph, we need to start with a line graph function. Unfortunately, the, uh, the scatter plot function will not create confident, er, confidence intervals, so we will use the line graph function. Click that. We want to include the data points, so we're going to use this value box right here. Click it, and notice the blue line is the upper value, the orange line is the lower value. Now we're going to add our population mean. To do that, we're going to go select data, which is this button right here. Select data and see series one and series two. Now what we can do to put more descriptive values like upper confidence interval for series one and lower confidence interval for series two. We're going to then add the mean and then highlight the values that contain our means. And then finally, Excel doesn't know what to label the x axis, so the default is 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to edit that and we are going to actually put in the names of our populations. In this case, the names of the three lakes that the geese are found on. We now want to add high-low bars on our three data points for our three populations. To do that, we're going to use the quick layout option. Click that, and then you want to use layout 10. That is the bottom left-hand most layout. Click that, and notice we now have our high-low bars added. We first want to get rid of this orange line and this blue line. Instead of having the blue and orange dots, we want to make those little bars. 
So click either one, it doesn't matter which one you do first. And then right click it, or two finger click it if you're a Mac person. And we're going to click Format Data Series. We're going to go to the Fill and Line option. And notice the Line option comes out first. And we're going to click No Line. And notice that deletes our line. And then we're going to go to the Marker option. And click Marker option again to pull it down. And we're going to go from a dot to built in and then we're going to make that a line. I like to make the line nine point. That's purely an aesthetic issue. For fill, my suggestion is to make it a solid fill and make it black, but again this is more aesthetic than anything else. For the border, again I would make it solid and black. We're now going to click the bottom line and repeat the process. Now, if we wanted a line graph with confidence, confidence interval, we are essentially done. We just need to label our axis. However, uh, in this case, since we're talking about three distinct populations, it is more appropriate to have a bar graph. So to do that, I'm just going to get rid of this key since it's really not necessary. And then I'm going to click the gray line and right click it. And we are going to go to change series chart type. And we get this dialog box. And it shows you the upper confidence interval, lower confidence interval, lines with marks, which is what we want. But for means, we want to go from lines with marks to this bar chart. Click that, you go OK, and now notice we've gone from a line chart to a bar chart. Now the rest of what I'm going to do is primary aesthetic. I don't like the wide spacing on here. So one of the things I like to do instead of having a 300% spacing, I like about 50%. I think the gray is a little bit too dark, so we're going to go to our fill line option. To highlight them all, fill options solid but going from black we're going to go to a light gray I like to uh, add line borders and make them one point black now at a minimum we need to label axis so where it says axis title I would t title it something like goose population and for axis here we're going to say mean or average clutch size and then we're going to throw in our units which is eggs per nest and this chart title clutch size by location now at a minimum you could say this graph is done personally I don't like the default setting Excel uses I think the font is too small so I would definitely go to something more like 12 font Instead of gray, I use black text. For the population description, again, black and 12 or 14. For our y axis, again, black and 12 to 14. For here, the numbers definitely need to be at least 12 point and black. I also like to add a line along the y axis click that right click go format axis and then go to the bucket for fill and line make it black and I like one point and then again this is purely aesthetic I like to put a black line at the bottom too and now we are done creating our graph with 95 percent confidence intervals thank you very much